even though Chaz is saying that he just needed to go through these things and to process certain things the way that he needed to and he was overwhelmed, it really, really felt like I need to get out of this situation with these four women that I created because I can't play in their face the way that I want to. What's good, everybody? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Ready to Love, Season 9, Episode 10, Tommy's Getaway Part 2. If you have not already and you enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video, and then leave your comments down below. All right, y'all, let's let's talk about this episode. It, it felt very Chaz heavy um, without him being like the main focal point, if that makes sense. So the episode starts off with William going home, which we knew. Much like at the end, much like at like the 40 minute mark of this episode, we get a preview that shows us that Rashina was not going to be on the who is working the commercial switchboard at own y'all are ruining the end of every episode but whatever <coughs> so william goes home um which to me made the most sense anyways right so william doesn't think that he should have been sent home and i'm like if not you then who like, seriously, who? William did not have a bona fide connection. I'm sorry, but him and Maya did not have a bona fide connection, right? So Patrice is crying as if that was her main dude. I thought that was interesting. Like, and it's, I get it, you're, it, you're emotional, you're caught up in the moment, but Patrice was crying that William went home to the point that she, like, has to excuse herself and go, Take a minute. I was like, wow, okay. So Tommy tells the guys, you know, that they are back in charge this week, tells them to explore trust and vulnerability with the ladies. So Laron was not worried about that. Laron was looking at that crawfish boil over to the side, and that's all he could focus on. So Chaz is talking to Laron and Alonzo and tells them that, man, I thought that I would be up there with you, with y'all. And Laron was like, I mean, all due respect, like, why? And Chad said, it, well, I, it's because I have all these different, you know, connections. Out of the five women on the trip, he has a connection with four of them. Um, and he's like, all these ladies are waiting for me to make a decision. And I just, what, well, this is hard for me. It, it, I feel like it shouldn't be, right? Because let's be real, Chaz, Mika is not a connection. Lord knows Patrice is not a connection. You didn't even bother to save her number. She's clearly not a connection. You weren't checking. You have not been checking for Patrice because you did not bother to have this lady's phone number. So the fact that she's like, well, I do like you, that's not a connection. That's you wanting to have a roster, okay? So... Vanessa is talking to Chaz and she's like, you know, trying to find out where his head is. And he's like, I'm not trying to mislead anyone. He said that, but then he's like, I'm not afraid to go home. I, if you're not afraid to go, he said he's not afraid to go home. I beg to differ. Chaz, you absolutely want to continue on with the show because if you were not afraid to go home and you were this overwhelmed, you would have went home. You wouldn't have been sitting on this trip eating strawberries out of Rashina's mouth. But I digress, right? So Vanessa tells him that, you know, there are four women and all of us are confused. We don't know who your top connection is. We don't know what we should do about this. We, like, You know what I mean? And I, I get it. Trying to juggle four women is hard. But let's be real again. Mika and Patrice are not connections. They're just not. So Vanessa tells him, like, you came to this, and I get you're saying you're overwhelmed, but I thought I was your top connection. I knew that you had a con another connection with Rashina, and you chose to add more women. 
Chaz is like, no, no, I didn't. Adding Patrice was a choice. And it's nothing against Patrice, but that was a choice. That was an unnecessary choice because you're not even talking to this lady. You added her just to be adding her, right? So Vanessa is like, I, we haven't spent any time together at all today. He tells her it's only seven. Nigga, seven? I, the night is, the day is gone at seven. The day is gone at seven. There are, I, I, the way he said it is as if he's telling her, girl, it's only noon. He said seven as in the PM. I said, okay. So Chaz says in his confessional, he feels that, uh, Vanessa has a pattern right now of all or nothing. That's the pattern she's showing to him, and he doesn't like that. That's that's kind of off-putting to him. And it's kind of like, isn't that everybody though? Doesn't everybody want all or nothing from a person that they're that they're that they're dating? She's not asking for all or nothing. She's asking for some clarity on the situation. She's asking, like, am I really your connection? If I came into this being your top connection, we are to assume that these two, I said um, last um, recap that they must have been either sleeping together or sleeping together the way that they were talking about the room situation. So why is it so wrong for her to want some clarity on what y'all got going? So Chaz is like, man, you got to stop that. Stop that. Trying to sound like, sounding like a, a old pimp from the 70s. And she's like, stop what? And he's like, that. And this is when I knew Chaz was just trying to play in these women's faces. So in his confessional, he said he expected more emotional maturity from Vanessa. And she's not giving that. I think Vanessa, although, you know, we were calling her single black female last week, I think that Vanessa is more than giving emotional maturity. She hasn't crossed the scene. She's talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, very personal to the side. She's not loud with you. She's conveying every, um, every emotion. She's articulating herself very well. She's being assertive. I guess I don't understand what emotional maturity is. He thinks that she's lacking. The fact that she feels that we're on this trip. We came into this trip. Hell, you drove me on this trip. We're supposed to be top connection. And it's 7 o'clock and you haven't bothered to interact with me. 7 o'clock is crazy, right? So he ends up getting R in a tizzy and he gets up and walks away from the conversation. So as he's walking away, he walks past Maya and Rashina who are outside and they're like, oh, what is that about? Because apparently he came storming through. So Vanessa comes outside and they ask her, what's good? Like, what happened with Chaz? So she's like, well, I just kind of let him know. We're all confused. We don't know what's going on with him. Rashina agrees. Now, for Rashina, Chaz is her only connection there, much like Vanessa, right? So, really, it's just kind of like she's going around being the third wheel unless Chaz is, you know, actively interacting with her. So, Vanessa um, said that she doesn't know if Chaz is gaslighting her or if her expectations are just too high. And I was with Maya. Your expectations are never too high when you are simply asking for clarification on your status with somebody else. You know what I mean? Your expectations would be high if Vanessa was going around and on some, I don't want you talking to anybody. You need to do this. I'm expecting this, that, and the other. She's not. She's asking for simple clarity and for them to spend some time together. I honestly think these trips, this trip should be the very last episode before the bridge or before, what do they, is it decision day, the choosing day, what it, pick me day, whatever it is. But they, the trip should be set with couples that are basic, that are not, or set with, with the connections right? The, the trip should be the very last episode. And then later that episode, we should be seeing these people pick each other. I think that will make the most sense.
I think that will make the most sense. But having all these singles on the trip, somebody always leaves early. Somebody always just doesn't show up. Somebody's feelings get hurt. Like, I just feel like it's, I don't know. I don't know. So, Vanessa even highlights, I'm not trying to get him, I'm not trying to force him to choose me or to make a decision at all. I just want to spend a little time with him, right? So we see Mika, she's going to check on Justin, who apparently has a headache. The interesting part about this scene is when Mika was like, so you coming back to my room again, like last night? I said, oh, yeah. Oh, so here's the thing. Chaz, one of your connections is is kicking it in the room with another dude. That's not your connection. Chaz, you still have the same two connections, Rashina and Vanessa. Rashina and Vanessa. Now, we can't tell, I well, not we, I, I couldn't tell if Justin was like caught off guard that she admitted it or if it was just a joke because his face was like, girl, what? Nonetheless, they got something going, which kind of doesn't make sense. Mika does not want kids. Justin is claiming he doesn't, but he does. So, okay. So later, while everybody is outside eating at that crawfish boil, LeBron just couldn't wait. Just just couldn't wait to run on over there. Um, Patrice, who apparently has been in her room this whole time, tore up about William. How should Alonzo feel? Like, seriously, how should Alonzo feel that my only connection here, my top connection, has been up in her room crying all day emotional over another man leaving. Is that really my top connection? But okay. So she's, I guess, sitting in the living room and she sees Chad. Um, I guess he walked by her or something. So she goes to check on him and he's in there packing. Now Chad sounds like he's up in there crying, saying that he wants to go home because he's hurting and he's tired. I guess I don't understand what are you hurting from? Are you hurting from accountability? Are you hurting from the, the thought that you have to take accountability? I don't understand what Chaz is hurting from. If Chaz feels overwhelmed, valid. You're overwhelmed. You've never dated this many women in this, in you know, at one time. But this is also the nature of the show. And it's hard for me to feel bad for somebody that signs up for a show to date multiple women at the same time and then feels overwhelmed. You knew what you were signing up for. It almost feels not that you're overwhelmed with dating all these women, that you're overwhelmed with all the women that you're dating knowing about each other. See, Chaz can't run game and be the smooth talker that he probably is to every woman when they're all in the same house. Because I'm certain that somebody told him, well, I heard you sent everybody the same good morning message. I'm certain he heard that, which he's not accustomed to. So he said he wants to be around people that love and understand him. So Patrice is like, you don't think we like, you know, you don't think we're here for you. And he just, you know, he wants to go home. So Chaz very cowardly leaves. I think it's cowardly because for you to just leave and not tell anybody, I think that's lame. You could have just as easily went on down to the crab boil. Y'all, I got to get out of here. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I need to, you know, take a step back from everything, have a little time to myself, and then do it that way. I think but to run through the front door and leave, to me, I just felt like that was lame. So as he's walking out with his bags to the car, he feels that, you know, he feels a way that the ladies think that he's playing with their hearts. You're not being clear, though. I guess I'm confused as to why he's so confused about this. I'm also confused as to why, Chaz, you left when you, th you drove three of the people up there. You three people rode with you. LaRon, Mika, and Vanessa roll with you. How are they supposed to get home now? Now we all got to pile into this, into Patrice's sprinter. Oh, my God. So Patrice goes outside and lets everyone know uh, Chaz left. Everybody was like, wait, what? Like, gone, gone? So Rashina feels away 
that, you know, I'm supposed to be one of his top connections. Why didn't he want to talk to me? Well, he didn't want to talk to Patrice either. She went up in the room. So it's not like he sought out Patrice. Patrice just happened to go up into the room. Um, and then Patrice just lets everybody know it's not anybody's fault. Um, it's nothing that we did or anything like that. So the mood is somber. You can tell it's like, all the air has been let out of the balloon. And then LaRon is like, let's go turn up. And it's like, so they all up in there, you know, doing the cha-cha slide and whatnot. And then they see that Tommy has some fireworks outside for them. Personally, I think they were sitting too close to those fireworks. But that's me. But I feel like they were, <coughs> excuse me, I feel like they were way too close to those fireworks. You need to be a distance. Like, I feel like any one of those um, sparks or whatever could have fell down, but whatever, you know. So we then get to a couple individual dates. Laron and Maya have a little movie date in the living room. And it's something, like, Maya don't like this man. <laughs> I don't think Maya likes Laron. I don't. I think Maya is going along to get along to stay to the end of the show. But I don't think Maya truly likes Laron, right? If she truly liked Laron, Laron would have been on that date with her ex. I think Maya more so liked Justin, but then she found out Justin was broke. And I'm only saying broke as in not the level of money that she wants her dude to have. But she does not like Laron, right? She's tolerating him. We then see Alonzo and Patrice have a little movie night in her room. And I'm just very curious as to how Alonzo feels that Patrice was crying for a couple hours over William leaving. I, I really hope that gets brought up at the reunion or brought up just in general. We then see Justin is in bed with Mika. So they clearly been in bed together and they're kissing. So I guess their connection is going strong for now. Again, Chaz. Two of your connections right now are with their actual connection. But okay. So we then get Laron and Maya there on their first solo date. And it's very unfortunate and weird that we are basically at the end of the show and y'all are on your first solo date together. Um, They talk about what their future will look like. Maya talks about going out, you know, once a month. Laron said that ain't, ain't stopping nothing over here. We gonna be out once a week. Uh, okay I mean but Maya you're the one that also said that you're okay with his lifestyle and the amount of time that he likes to go out so you shouldn't have cringed or anything at that you know you are setting yourself up for that type of lifestyle um he was fishing for compliments he kept asking her so am I charming do you still feel like I'm charming do you like like she doesn't like you Anytime you have to fish for compliments, the other that person doesn't like you. And I feel like LeBron is just so thirsty because he really likes Maya that he's ignoring the fact that this woman does not ever compliment you outside of saying that you're fun. She doesn't say you're attractive. She doesn't say you're handsome. She doesn't talk about any other qualities that would a person would think is endearing to hear. She calls you fun. She didn't think you were capable of being romantic. You're ignoring all of that solely because you want to stay on the show. They have to change this process. They have to. I think we would have seen a different um, side of Laron if Koshia would have stayed. But it's just interesting I don't know. This process has to change. It's just, it doesn't make sense because we are down to the only real true connection out of these couples that's left is Alonzo and Patrice. I think they honestly and truly have a genuine connection, but everybody else, nobody else has a connection. Like nobody. So we then get Alonzo and Patrice during the date. They do like a bungee fitness date. Um, and then she kind of tells him that she thinks it would be easy to fall in love with him they're progressing i think at a very organic natural state so 
it would be nice if we saw more dates with them, but I feel like a lot of their dates, we see surface level conversations. We're not seeing them have like a lot of the deeper conversation that we've seen past um, seasons have, but all right. So we get to the men's lounge. Chaz comes strolling in like ain't nothing happened. Tells Tommy that he didn't finish the overnight trip, said that he just needed a moment and it was overwhelming. He said that he went there with just two or three connections and then, you know, after a conversation with Patrice, it became four. And I, I, I'm going to keep stressing this. Patrice is not a connection. You weren't thinking about this lady to the point that you never even saved her phone number. So the fact that she tells you that she likes you does not make her a connection. It doesn't. It's almost like Chaz just wanted to say, yeah, I got a whole roster. I was on that show and I had a whole roster of them. That's what it's giving. These are not connections, but all right. So Alonzo points out that Rashina was stressed with Chaz leaving. And he said it kind of made the rest of the guys kind of feel like chapped liver. Um, But I mean, Patrice was, was crying when William left too. But, I mean, he's not going to throw her under the bus because that is his connection. So, they go around. Everybody has a connection. Um, and I'm hoping that Chaz listened to Alonzo, to Alonzo talking about his connection with Patrice. I hope Chaz listened to Justin talk about his connection with Mika. And that should kind of let you know those two are off. Those two are done. They're done. And then Laron is talking about his connection with Mika. So for Rashina, um, Chaz is like, well, I think that she was kind of judging, you know, for me having these emotions and these feelings. And I like, we don't know what their conversation was after that. But I think if anybody was just judging you, Chaz, it's from the way that you handled this. Not the fact that you had emotions, not the fact that you had big feelings, but more so the fact that you were feeling away and you ran out of there like a coward. Instead of you at least saying bye to everybody or at least going to these women one at a time and saying, look, I need some time. I'm going to, you know, go home. Give me a couple days. I need to process all of this so I can come to you guys with the clarity and the reassurance that you all need. You didn't do that. So when we get to Chaz taking out Rashina, because Tommy puts it into his hands, take her out, see if she's ready to love or not. I really wish, to be honest, that Tommy would have told Chaz take out Rashina and take out um, Vanessa and send one of them home. Why should Vanessa be off the hook? I thought that was kind of odd. So, but it's fine because Rashina didn't want to be there no more anyways. So she said seeing him is a done, done, done. Chas was acting weird, acting as if nothing happened, beating around the bush, talking about some, what do you want to know? No, no, no. You were the one that left. You should be, and you invited me out on the date. You should be coming into this situation, into this dinner with a an itinerary. You should be coming in ready to get into some things. It definitely is not like what what am I thinking or anything like that. I thought that was really weird that he even said that. So he's like, I heard it was like a funeral when I left. She was like, I mean, we were all a little confused. She said, but we, you know, ended the weekend with some fun times. It was a good time after in the end. So she wants to get right to it. And she's like, where's your headspace with me, with us, with this process? So he starts off by saying, well, we had a lounge today. And she was like, oh, stop. Let me get something out. And she self-eliminates before he can tell her that he was going to, that she's not ready to love. Now, do I think that Rashina came into this ready to self-eliminate? I don't. I don't. I think as soon as he said we had a men's lounge today, she knew that her time was up. She knew it. So she goes on and said that she didn't like the way that he handled the the trip. And he would say, well, what would you have preferred me to do? And she would say, either stay 
or at least tell us that you were leaving. Let us know that, you know, it wasn't anything that we did. We could, we thought it was maybe something that we did. And when I think about it, I can see Rashina maybe being like, okay, maybe it's because we were kissing in the kitchen. Maybe it's because I said that, you know, he kissed the strawberry out my mouth. So I can see where her train of thought is going. But it's also like, I just kind of feel like, Rashina, it very much came across as, I'm going to leave before you kick me out. I'm going to quit before you fire me. You know what I mean? So you can tell that he was upset by that because he's like, I wanna, can I finish what I was going to say? And she was like, well, you keep cutting me off. So now it's snippy. And he's like, well, you're being very guarded. You're being very defensive. Those are the same things that you did, Chaz, when you left. Right? So... Basically, he's upset that he didn't get to with um he didn't get to tell her she wasn't ready to love. So she gets up and leaves, and I feel like this reunion is going to be a mess. I do. Next week we see that the ladies are introducing the guys to their families. Something happened with um Maya and Laron. Something that has to do with their drinking, obvious or with his drinking. Um, and then it looks like Justin is not prepared to meet Mika's father. And Chaz is like crashing and burning with Vanessa's family. The season is a chop. Bring back, make a move. <laughs> Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. And I will catch you guys in the next. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Bye.